working right now. I'm still setting all the little bits up on my setup, but we'll walk over to the platform in just a few minutes. Good morning. Let's get my last batteries and everything set up, and then we'll walk over and start doing a little bird watching. an osprey that I am hearing great kiskadees behind me. Kiskadee! Let's 
goat. Let's see if they're visible. Is there a nice looking little bird? If I can get my cables all set up here. I don't know. situated so I can move. Yep. All right. So we're out here at Hazel Baysmore Hawk Watch. And again, just a reminder, I cannot hear what you're all hearing. I can see the video on my end, but I can't hear it. So if there's any issues with volume or sound quality, let me know in chat. And whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch, I can hear you all no matter where you are, or, uh, or see your chat no matter where you are. So feel free to just type in any questions you have. But I'm hearing the Kiskadees right up here in the tree. So let's see if there's anything up there that we can see. There's white-winged doves flying by. And the Kiskadee is somewhere right there. And of course the camera wants to focus on the boring chain link fence instead of the interesting looking bird behind it. I don't even see him with my binoculars. Kiskadee must be on the back side of the tree. So we'll go over to the Hawkwatch platform and see what's over there. Uh -oh. Here in Mockingbirds. Technically, the Hawkwatch platform is supposed to be closed to people so they don't have big crowds up there for the actual researchers. But I talked to them yesterday and they said as long as I can claim a corner away from the rest of the researchers, I'm fine to be up on the platform. But they're limiting the amount of people that they let up on the platform. But I'm here early and there's not very really many people here yet, so I think I can claim my little spot. Let's see what we've got over here. Looks like mostly white-winged doves. This feeder is often has green jays on it, but looks like we've just got some of the white wings this morning. The usual horde on the ground. Lots of white-winged doves. There should be Incas around. Actually, speak of the little tiny bird. And he's right over here. I see Inca doves. Right there. Nice. Much smaller than the white winged doves. Very scaly in appearance. Very nice little bird. And if you heard that, dirt, 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 that is indeed the green jays. And like I said, they go to that feeder over there. They're right in line with the sun, so it looks a little bit washed out right now. But there are the green jays. They're going down to the ground. Might be a little clearer view. There's a green jay. Nice and green with a blue head. Flying up into the trees. Being very active. I think they want to get onto that feeder, but the white winged doves are not letting them. There he is. He's found some space that is not yet claimed by a dove. They're being a little flighty. Uh, white wing doves, as usual. 
have a look around. Do you enjoy the exciting white winged doves? Let's see if there's anything else out here right now. Here I'm seeing mockingbirds. I'm hearing couches. Kingbird. Let's see. Yeah, here's a good view of a couches kingbird over here right in the sun on the top of this tree. There he is. Come on, focus camera, focus. Hey, camera, why are you focusing on something that is not there? Well, there goes the bird. I don't know who programmed the AI in this little camcorder to focus stuff, but it seems to not like focusing on birds. It tries its hardest to not focus on them, so I'll be switching back and forth between the wide field camera on the top and the this guy down here is my much bigger DSLR camera. But it doesn't give you a wide field view, but it's much better at focusing on specific birds. So I'll just kind of pop back and forth between those two as needed. But for now, let's wander up onto the platform itself. So this is the Hazel Baysmore Hawk Watch platform. It's put in here by Hawk Watch International, and they're the ones that do the yearly hawk watches. Here's the sign of hawk watch data. And what's been seen yesterday, what's been seen so far, and what is usually seen. You can see lots of broadwing hawks coming over right now. Kestrels, Merlins, Turkey Vultures, and Hawkwatch.org. They are down a number of sites this year since they couldn't safely set up in other locations, but they are still able to come here and do the Hawkwatch in this area. If you want to donate to Hawkwatch International, just go to Hawkwatch.org. And you'll see a little donation link up in the corner. I'm sure they'll appreciate anything you can toss their way. Let's see, I've got a question here. Do the Green Jays have the same vocal talent as Blue Jays in Central Texas to mimic hawks? And yes, indeed, they do. Yesterday I was watching a Green Jay uh, mimic a red-shouldered hawk as well, right over by those feeders, I think, possibly to scare some of those doves away. I'm hearing a red-shouldered hawk right now, which may either be a green jay or it could be the local red-shouldered hawk. Uh, yesterday I had the red shoulder come up and land right on the railing, just a few feet in front of me. So maybe he'll give another showing of that today. But this is the view from the Hawkwatch platform. You can see well out over this field. There's some power poles far in the distance, and there's frequently white-tailed hawks sitting on them if you scope it out. Got some ponds down below. Those usually have waterfowl and shorebirds and green kingfisher on them. So we'll probably walk down there a little bit later in the day. And right down here is a water feature, and they toss seed out in front of it as well. So frequently you get stuff down there, the green jays, the kiskadees, white tip doves, maybe an olive sparrow will come in. Never know exactly what will come in when, but there's usually interesting birds there. And sometimes buff-bellied hummingbirds. But we'll just keep an eye out to see what all we can see. Right now it seems the white-winged doves are what is everywhere. And a morning dove just flew by. And the house sparrows are moving. That's another 
large number of birds that we'll see down here is the house sparrows. So I'm hearing the kiskadee. Ree! Ree! See if he might come in here in just a little bit. Let me get my other battery set up so I can keep my little computer device here happy and running its fans so it doesn't overheat. Give me a minute here. Attach a few more wires to myself. Just enjoy the view. I'm hearing again more couches, kingbirds. Now it is very clear out right now, which means it will probably be fairly hard for me to actually focus on any distant migrating hawks. I was trying it yesterday, and when they're way up there, just getting the camera to focus on them and me actually being able to find them on my little tiny view screen is quite difficult. I can find them if I'm looking through the camera uh, viewfinder, but I can't do that and stream at the same time. So it makes it a little bit more complicated. But I'll try my best to focus on at least a few hawks, especially if we get some big kettles of broad wings or interesting things coming over. And if they come over a little lower, I should have a little bit better chance of locating them. Or if they do look like what they did yesterday and come perch on the railing, definitely try and get that in focus. Okay. We're running. Let me know if the fan noise, for whatever reason, is overpowering. Uh, sometimes uh, you accidentally turn on the microphone on the back of my little tablet here, and that's where all the fans are. So it should be muted. All right, we've got a few more birds I'm seeing. Let's see what this little guy is over in the tree. Oh, exciting. There's a house sparrow and a white-winged dove. Might as well point to them. So there's the rare, elusive house sparrow. And the chunky white-winged dove. And I am hearing blue-gray gnat catchers buzzing. <laughs> Carolina wrens. find anything else. I see stuff flying over the field. Well, they're flying out of sight, but there's there were black neck stilts down here in the pond that just flew by. If they don't fly back into view, we'll walk down there in a little bit and see if we can see them. Hoping to get a little more activity on the drip, but we'll give it a little more time. I'm hearing the stuff starting to move this way. Let me do a quick scan, see if I see any raptor like objects out there. Tail. 
I see a very distant hawk out here that's actually perched. Sitting right up on top there. I'm going to switch over to my bigger camera to get a little better close-up view of that one. And so switching in three, two, one. And we're back. Let me know how the audio sounds here. Not exactly sure since I'm just using the on-camera microphone. I think it might sound a little better than using the bigger one on the front. You won't hear the birds as well, but you also won't have the distortion of hearing me. I left my headset in the car, so I can't use my other microphone on that. I might, if the audio isn't good, I'll walk over and get it, but if this works, we'll just stay up here and look at some of these birds. If I can get you to focus. Good thing is this one has manual focus. There is a hawk, and let's zoom. Yeah, that's our red-shouldered hawk. You can see nice barring on the breast. Now, oh, come on. I can get my camera to actually stay centered on the hawk. This is a significant distance away. I have to center it up and then not touch it and zoom and zoom and there he is. That's a red-shouldered hawk. He's probably one that lives around here. I saw a young one yesterday, so this is a different one than the one that came up and perched right here on the Hawkwatch platform. But at least we got a hawk for the Hawkwatch right now. I'm not not hearing that you're having any trouble hearing me, so I'm just going to work on the assumption that the microphone is working. I'm hearing golden-fronted woodpecker. I got excited because I thought it wasn't the osprey. I thought it was something different. Uh, I'm seeing the, the green jays osprey. coming in. Let's but zoom out a little bit. Yeah. Device. <laughs> See if I can capture. Hummingbirds flying around. Let's see, let's pan over this way. Let's see if there's anything else down there. I think I just heard an indigo bunting to its little bzzz. Well, we've got a... what have we got over here? Flight of egrets. Yeah, there's some egrets. Great egrets. Don't see any little yellow feet, so yeah, I'd say probably great. Flying 
more like how I'd think snowies would fly. But they look like they have black feet, at least on my screen. If you see differently, let me know in the chat. Nice big flight of egrets. And they've lost them. I think they landed or went behind a tree. Let's see if we can see anything on the pond. Don't see anything on the pond right now. I do hear a house finch, which I think might be coming down to the water drip. Let's see if anything shows up at the drip. At least here in Cardinals, and the usual house sparrows. You had anything interesting come in this morning? Um, there, there was something I did, couldn't, didn't identify. I took a picture. Oh. So I will, I will show you. Yes. It was yellow. Oh, all right. And oh, and there's the green jays. Could have been. Anywhere from a, some kind of tanager to a warbler. Hell, I, I just didn't know. So <laughs> oh. I just got a picture. That's the good thing so about I cameras. Is it out later. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that. But he landed over on the top of that tree, and I'm like, well, I'm not sure what that is right off the end, so I'm just going to grab a picture real quick. Well, let's see if we can figure out what it is. There should be a number of warblers coming through here this time of year. Uh, there's also... Oh uh, no, it's blurry! Oh no! It is blurry, dang! Well, still might be able to get something from it. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a general shape. Holy cow. Ah... Uh, Did you get a look finch, at it perhaps? could be goldfinch. Did, did you get a look at the bill? No. No. I went it, directly. He was landed right over there, and I'm like, man, I. It would, and he was as soon as I took the picture, he was gone. So I couldn't get a second shot at it, but it does look like a goldfinch. There, yeah, there could be goldfinches around here. There's also uh, orioles. A the little bit, oriole, maybe, which, on the beak. No, the beak doesn't look like an oriole. That looks like a little stubby finch beak. Yeah, I can see the black wings. All I seen was yellow, so I grabbed the picture as quick as I could, but on this picture I can see black wings, so I'm thinking goldfinch. Yeah, that would probably be the I'm trying most to get likely. I'm trying to get better <laughs> taking pictures. There's a... There's this guy named uh, Brian Pfeffer. Yeah. When I was looking for a camera, he has he takes pictures and he has a blog and stuff like that. And he had a lot of recommendations, advice on cameras and stuff and what your goals were. And so I've contacted him and I'm gonna he's got one of these cameras as well, so I was gonna sit down and talk to him about how to get it set up so I can get more out of it. Yeah, it takes practice getting on them, and yeah. you, depending on using the screen or the viewfinder, it's like with this thing, is finding the hawks when they're up in the sky is super uh, 
you know, irritating. <laughs> White winged doves. And over here. There was a, someone pointed out that it might have been you. Inca dove. A bronzed cowbird. Yes, there was a bronze cowbird here yesterday. I don't have that one, and I didn't react because I was just thinking cowbird in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's different from the brown headeds. Hopefully, he'll come back. If they're in, in the sun and you see a cowbird, they, for one, they won't have the brown head. They'll just be mostly black. Their head will look fatter, and if you get them in the right light, you see a red eye. The bronze cowbirds have red eyes. I wonder if I actually got a picture of one this morning already, then. Because I, uh... That looks like a yellow eye to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably a grackle. Oh, yeah. A female. I've been watching all the doves looking for that common ground dove today, too. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Bird. Oh, I got a reply here. Uh, goldfinch winter in Coast Bend. Well, there should be lesser goldfinches around here. American goldfinch is not here, but uh, lesser goldfinch uh, is going to be around in small numbers here. Got a lot of. Oh, I'm hearing the Kiskadees. Oh, and I'm seeing a little. What are you? Flitting around. I think I might see a white eyed vireo over here. A second down in here, a little bird that looked vireo ish. Oh, yeah, good. Well, green jay was in the no, sun for a second. Just, uh, it over oh, we've got a long billed thrasher. There he is, long billed thrasher. Talking to us. Oh, and it just flew off. I thought I seen the thrasher fly through here, but I wasn't sure. And he was pretty big. Yep, this is long build over here. He's he just flew a little bit, but he's further down. Somewhere right down in here. I see him fly across. Uh, looks like the feed is coming out now, so <laughs> maybe he'll come over. Golden fronted. Yep. Gotta get exciting meal. Yeah, I think Thrasher might be complaining that the food wasn't out yet. Do whip. Do whip. 
I might be moving that up here. That's yeah, looking a little into the sun. Let's see, I see stuff I'm down. surprised she doesn't get attacked. <laughs> The other looks like ducks down here. Zoom it in. If I can get it before it leaves. Yeah. No, well, it went. Well, there are ducks down there. It went out of view too fast. Feed is now placed. So let's see what decides to come out and get some breakfast. Something just flew in over there. I think that might be a snowy egret. Uh, it looks like a snowy egret and a couple white ibis. little snowy and these are juvenile white ibis which is why they're brown and not white way down at the pond Oh, this is just European starlings flying overhead. I think, oh, there's bird watchers down there. <laughs> Ah, the green jay is coming out. Should be more birds coming to get some food. something yellow up on the top of this tree. Yes! Let's see what that is. That... If it would turn its head... That looks like a... It'll come out from behind the leaves. It's an oriole. Is it? It's got a longer beak. Small yellow oriole. Looks like orchard oriole. <clears throat> orchard or hooded. Yeah, that's got a little little black chin, so it looks like a first-year male orchard oriole. Well, I had no hope of figuring that out. <laughs> and off he goes. Oh. I got a picture of him behind the leaves anyways. Yeah, I guess when he was out of focus, the beak just looked it, tiny. He might have been moving, so yeah. he just exaggerated it. And they are our smallest oriole. Thank <laughs> you. 
let's look back. That beak did look kind of curved. Got a few shots of it. But yeah, I think that one was, from what I could see, looked like a little orchard oriole. Maybe we'll keep an eye out for hoodeds around here. Had several hooded orioles yesterday. got down here the rare and elusive northern cardinal <laughs> and hopefully the white tip dove might show itself down there Maybe kind of back in the shade there so we'll pump up that ISO I hear a mockingbird trying to do a Chuck Bull's Widow. Ah, more white winged doves. Hearing lots of stuff, but nothing wants to come out in the open. Hearing green jays chattering. Do a quick scan with my binoculars, see if I see any hawks. Currently, nothing, at least that I can see. Okay, seems like my camera froze for just a second, but I'm back. Hearing lots of mockingbirds. Let's see, house sparrows flying by. down here. Something in the tree, probably just a dove. Yep, white winged dove. And, oh, that looks like maybe a female vermilion flycatcher. Yeah. I think I see a little peachy on the belly. Yep. 
Female Vermilion. Can't get much better focus than that. It's distant and there's lots of heat distortion. Or just camera distortion. Yeah, it flew off, but still, good bird. Vermilion flycatcher. We'll walk down there a little later, see if we can find the male. Yeah, there's the white winged dove. If all else fails, there's always a white winged dove to look at. Hearing the green jays. Sir, I think I see something. Down here. Ah, uh, house sparrows. Another bird that you can always find. Little invasive house sparrows. Lots of them around here. They come in for the free food. Oh, there's a hooded oriole in the top of this tree. Hooded Oriole male. Bright orange. Oh, gorgeous bird. Let's get some exposure a little higher. There he is. Long pointed curving beak. Bright orange. Big white wing shoulder patch, wing bar. There another very small Oriole. Yeah, he's just sitting up in the sun, showing off. A very nice looking bird. You've got a hawk? I have a hawk. Flying or perched? Perched. Uh, is he on a blue, pole? Blue trash can on the road? Yep. Okay, in the trees to the left and above that. Left and above. Oh yeah, I see him way okay. out there. Little dead snag. Yep. I'll go check him out. I have a very bad picture. <laughs> Have a look at him, though I hate to leave this orchard oriole, or not orchard oriole, hooded oriole. He's being so nice and cooperative. I'll give a 30 more second look at this beautiful oriole, and let's pan over, see what this hawk is. The hawk is pretty distant. He's perched. Just from binocular view, I guess maybe red shoulder. But, well, this is a hawk watch after all. Let's have one final close up of our Oriole. There he is, Mr. Hooded Oriole. Nice looking bird. All right, let's go over this way and find this hawk. I said, very distant. Yeah, that looks on screen. Yeah, it looks like a red shoulder. It's about as high magnification as I can get, but yeah. Mr. Red Shoulder looking for breakfast. Oh, we've got another new bird for the day. Up closer. Got a white tipped dove. So 
surrounded by house sparrows. Very fat little dove. They like to walk on the ground instead of flying. Usually fairly shy, but here they come out for food. Chunky little bird. About the size of a white-winged dove. Maybe a little wider. But of course lacking the white wings. See, they don't like to fly away. They walk, waddle back and forth. And they do like to stick to cover and shadowed areas. They come out for food. These here are fairly used to people up on the platform. And as a cardinal, you can see they still walk back and forth. Unlike other birds, they get scared and fly away. A little white on the forehead, white under the wing, white under the tail. But in the right light, they're quite pretty doves, a little reddish on the nape. And they just vanish into the shadows, bright red legs. Kind of skulking around, coming in and out of the shadows. Let's see what else? We've got other stuff coming in. Ooh, exciting, rare, great tailed grackles. A few males and a female. We'll watch the black colored birds for a little smaller one. Might get bronzed cowbird. Plenty of doves. Let's go back to the white tip. There's a white tip and a white wing. You can see the white tip. It's a little fatter than a white wing dove. Ah, I think I hear, oh, yes, black-bellied whistling ducks up in the sky. Let's see if I can get a focus on them. Flying by, a little white in the wing. And they're whistling at us. Not sure if you can hear it on the stream. Ah, there they go. Black-bellied whistling ducks. into the sun. Let's see if there's anything out in the field. Often there'll be harriers. Bronze cowbird. Oh yes, there is a bronze cowbird down amongst the grackles. Let's double check it. Yep, see the big fat head? See if we can zoom in and get that red eye on it. There's the red eye. Nice. You can see they've got a little rough on the back of their neck. Big red eye. That's off. But got a diagnostic look at them. Very good. There's a green jay coming down. If I can find him, there he is, green jay. It's finally cooperative green jay is kind of holding still. Well, I say that as he flies away immediately. Lots of white winged doves. A 
lots of corn on the ground. There's the green jay. That looks like bronze cowbird is back. There he is. <clears throat> Zoom in a little bit. Again, there's the red eye. They've got that little ruff on the back of their neck, makes them look kind of fat headed. Yeah. They'll fluff that up when they're displaying. There, when he's in the sun, you can see the bronze color on him. Right. Beautiful bird. And off he goes. And back to the white winged doves again. Uh, yes, it is. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, when the team arrives, we're going to have to ask you to move to the west again. Oh, yes, okay. definitely. Thank you. Just let me know where I will not be in your way. Appreciate that. That's what's very cool of you. Yep. We hate to do that. No, oh, I understand completely. Yeah, Everyone yeah. wants to be yeah, safe. it's just a totally different thing this year. Yep. I'm just happy I can get out anywhere. Oh, uh, you ain't. Man, <laughs> you ain't. We were, we were up... Uh, uh, you know, it was a big question mark whether we were going to be able to open up or not. So. Yeah, I heard a lot of them weren't able to right. oh, open absolutely. up. Right, uh, absolutely. HWI only opened us in the Grand Canyon. Oh, right. Because we have relatively easy access to medical. Oh, facilities. sure. Yeah, you gotta... That's the only reason we got to open. Uh, yeah, I guess this is fairly close to the city, so yeah, I was a <laughs> if you need to. I guess uh, Grand Canyon, they were within an hour of a hospital. All right. Grand Canyon kind of out there in the middle of nothing. Yeah. And I guess with the amount of people that they have there, they it, they set up some facilities. But I don't know. I guess it's not too far. Yes. And I, did get a question at Booth Park. Family saw a bunch of green birds that looked like parrots. Uh, those would probably be monk parakeets. Uh, it's right here in Corpus Christi. There are there is a population of green parakeets that can be or, or not green parakeets, monk parakeets that can be around. That would be the most likely green parrot-like bird you'd see up here. Down in South Texas, you get lots of different types of parrots. You get green parakeets, uh, but uh, up here, it would just be the monk parakeets. They're green on the back with grayish breast. But I'm not seeing any of those here. If we drive down to Corpus Christi later in the day, we might have a luck at seeing the green parakeet. Or, ah, I keep saying green parakeets. Monk parakeets. Right now, we just get green jays. which is a bird I'm happy to accept. Let's see, we got another flock of black-bellied whistling ducks going over. Switch back to my wider field camera for a second, so it'll be dark for a couple seconds in three, two, one. And we're back. I'm going to go ahead and move my 
set up out of the way of the Hawk Watchers. Come right over here where we were set up yesterday. And have the added bonus of being able to be in the shade just a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I'm still gonna be in the sun where I can see the birds. The shade should come up a little later. Watchers, they arrive right at nine, and they stay all day to count until five, five thirty-ish in the afternoon. And they do that every day all throughout fall migration. So they get every hawk that flies over this area is accounted for. Usually, I believe they have about. 12, 13 hawk watch stations, and I think this year they were only able to open two, two or three due to the current situation. Uh, so, just like everything right now is operating at minimal capacity. Again, for those that weren't here earlier, it's, uh, Hawk Watch International is the organization that does all the hawk watches. They're the ones that are responsible for this wonderful Hawkwatch platform here and they do a great service for counting raptors which are a good indicator species overall for overall bird health populations of birds when you count the hawks it kind of takes a lot of that stuff into account so it's a good bit of data to have if you are interested in donating to Hawkwatch International, you can go to hawkwatch.org and there is a donate button that you can click on there or just Google search Hawkwatch International and anything you can send their way, I'm sure they would appreciate. Let's see, I'm still hearing Open-fronted woodpeckers. Let's see if there's anything down here besides birder. Let's see. Yeah, this little camera doesn't do long-distance focusing very well, but that's probably the same snowy egret and white ibis that we were looking at earlier. Ladderback woodpecker. And there's again something down the hill that kind of sounds like an ani. There are ani in the area, but there's also lots of mockingbirds and thrashers, all of which can mimic the sound that an ani makes. Alright, another question is what kind of breakfast is the hawk most likely to get at this park? Well, out in the field there's lots of mice and rats. I actually saw one of the rats earlier come into the feeders. I think it was a cotton rat of some type. So they would gladly grab one of those if it showed itself. Uh, I haven't really seen many rabbits around here. There's a big golf course behind me that I would think would have rabbits and squirrels on it that something like a red-shouldered hawk might pick up. And there's lots of white-winged doves, which would be something that uh, the peregrine falcon, which we saw yesterday, cool, would nice. gladly oh, grab, yeah. along with Cooper's hawks and uh, Sharpie. They don't usually go after something as big as a white-winged dove, but they could get one of these house sparrows. 
and I wouldn't complain if they picked off a few of those. And the osprey that we were hearing earlier is mostly a fish eater. And there is, down there where that tree line is, there's a river, and the osprey will hunt there or over these ponds here and grab some fish. Seeing something yellow there. That looks like a couch's kingbird. It's very blurry, but you can identify it because it has a gray head and the yellow goes all the way up the breast. If it was a western kingbird, that yellow would only go about halfway up the breast. It would be gray otherwise. We'll see if we can get a little better look at one of those later through the better camera, especially if it comes a little closer. Hearing the golden fronted woodpecker. Pick, 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 pick. And the ladder back woodpecker laughing behind me. Let's see what is on the pond I'm seeing. It's like, yeah, there's a few visible ducks on the pond. I'm going to switch over to my bigger camera. So it'll be dark in a second. Uh, let's see, let me get it focused first. So dark in three, two, one. And we're back. Uh, you see a uh, vermilion? It's red with, yeah. Yeah, there's, I saw a female vermilion earlier. I don't think it's visible from my vantage point. Yeah, he's blocked for me, but yeah, I, I saw a female vermilion earlier, so I would... Yeah, they just showed up like two days ago, I think. Yeah, the ducks are gone, but uh, there's... One of them was an American widgeon. And I think the other two were mottled ducks. You still see the vermilion? Yeah. Oh yeah, I can I can see him. Just see if I can zoom in here. There he is. There, vermilion flycatcher. Nice bright male. Excellent. It's a very pretty bird. I think I'm hearing the maybe the brown thrasher coming a little closer. Or not brown thrasher, long billed thrasher. So possibly could get brown thrasher uh, during fall migration here. Very cooperative vermilion flycatcher. Hearing a distant red shouldered hawk. Let's see what else can we see from here. Ah, flycatcher. There we go. Hit the wrong button. You see a warbler? Yeah. On top of the butterfly patch there. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I can see the movement. There's a warbler in here somewhere. Where'd he go? He's 
block from my angle. of killdeer. Great amount of butterflies. There it is. Supposed to be a Wilson's warbler female in here. For the warbler, it's supposed to be right in there somewhere. Let's see if we see any movement. just has to be blocked from my point of view. They will sit behind a leaf. And just not move sometimes. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Second, there was a hummingbird. We found the male orchard, first year male orchard oriole that I had earlier. There was a young male orchard oriole that flew up here earlier. Okay, that's if Vireo down there. And cheap cigarettes. Yeah. It looks like the morning rush for the food is over. 
Not even any house sparrows coming in. some of these ducks are. They keep going right behind the trees from up here. Oh yeah, right in front of that white second, dome thing. Second telephone pole. And yeah, he's right behind the power lines. Oh, there's there's two birds out there. There's one to the left of the big metal power pole and one to the right. And it was just like, uh, yeah, the first, yeah. The that? The right is, yeah. We just took off. Yeah, that looks like, like, yeah. Get a look at him. I did not see enough. I got on that, that right, didn't I? You got red? Did you, yeah, did you see red? Tail tail? Away. I didn't get a good enough look at it, but there could be red tails out there. Flying around. Oh, you went back. See this guy sitting here? So that looks like a red tail on the right, but the one on the left. One on the left. Yeah, I I can't make much out of it on my I little see a screen white here. Chip on it. It's up to you if you want to look through that and see. You can see him here, but let me center him up. Kind of a little hazy up there. Yeah, distant and hazy makes it always makes it difficult to get a good focus on the bird. Like a, yeah. I see a white tip on its tail. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell on that one. That, that could just be another red tail, but like a young red tail, but. A red shoulder. The downside of these little screens, I can't see much. Let's see if I can brighten it. No, it doesn't help. Yeah, that looks 
looks, yeah, there's, that's red tail. Big chunky hawk. Uh, yeah, little guy down here. Probably red shoulder. Oh. Let's see. For those anyone that wasn't here earlier, we got our white tip dove down here. If you're just tuning in. Another kind of little South Texas specialty bird, white tipped dove. Very ground dwelling little bird. And lots of house sparrows. This guy's a little chunkier than a white winged dove, which we also have plenty of. There's the white wing and the white tipped, and the house sparrows all over the place. running away. <laughs> Let's see what else do we have around here. Mockingbird singing. And so far, not really any big flights of hawks. doves. And there's the white tip out front. Just leave that there while I scan around the rest of the area. We got, oh, something else just flew in over here. I think it might be that orchard oriole again. Young male orchard oriole. Seems to be hopping around down here. Yeah, there he's feeding on a flower. Crawling through the undergrowth. Looks like he moved deeper back in. Or he's crawling higher up over here. Keep seeing the movement, but he's not holding still like he was earlier. I think he's looking for breakfast. Feeding on those little flowers. Where did he go? It might be him or it could be a house sparrow. Hard to pick out which movement is which. Yeah, those are those are house sparrows flying out. And we'll go back down here. House sparrows, white tip dove, white winged dove. We've got, I think there's, yeah, it just flew off, but I think there was an Inca dove up on the power lines. And there's a mockingbird. And we'll have a look at him, as long as he's being cooperative. And mockingbird, northern mockingbird. He's camera shy. He stopped talking as soon as I pointed at him. Some water. Oh. Uh, 
hearing more kiskadees in the distance. Kiskadee. He's sitting still, but he's not talking. And I'm not sure if this was the one that was mimicking the, uh, the Chuckles Widow earlier. Usually they have a Hawkwatch Festival down here every year and they bring in some rehab birds. And they had a kookaburra down here. So I was interesting to hear if the mockingbirds picked up the kookaburra after a few days of it yelling. Oh, I see something flying over here. Oh, there's a white-tailed kite. Let's see if I can get it in focus. There he is. He's moving. There, he's going back. White-tailed kite. Used to be called black shouldered kite because of their black shoulder. But I, I can't zoom in on him, he's moving too much. But you can see him there in the middle. Try one more. See if I can get him on zoom. There he is. Moving out of field of view. There he goes. White tailed kite. One of the first raptors I've gotten in flight over the Hawkwatch. Now this guy might just be sticking around here. Not sure if he's migrating. Oh, and he's kiting. Hovering, looking for food. Oh, might be. Going down, going down. He might have spotted some breakfast, but he went behind the trees. That is over beyond the river. That looks like he's gone down. Back up. Don't see the kite again. You still see it, Bob? here somewhere. See if I can see it. Oh yeah, he's kiting. There he is. White tail kite. Let's get some zoom. There he is. Coming back. Good look at the white tail kite. It's a little distant, but you can see a little shoulder patch. There he's. Oh, is he? Oh, he's kiting, hovering, not going to land. There he is. 
hovering, seeing if he sees anything to eat. <laughs> uh, might have spotted something. He's going down lower. Going over towards the highway. Yeah, it's a good bird. Hovering. Excellent. Come on, where'd you go? Lost him. I think he might have gone down out of sight. Still, very good bird. See him anymore, but he gave a good showing. Cool. White tailed tight. Well, we've got something flying in over here. I think it might have been an ibis. Get my camera rebalanced. There we go. A little smoother movement. Let's see, what else can we find? Mockingbird. Chirping. Oh, Mockingbird's talking again. We'll go have a look at him. See if he's camera shy still. There he is, singing away. Last time I had the tree in this part, the stays flew by, so it was. Green Jays might be coming back. If they come back, we'll have a look at them, and then we might walk down towards the pond. See if we can find some ducks, some shorebirds. Maybe that green kingfisher. Yeah, here come the Green Jays. And there he is. Beautiful birds. Love a green jay. Nice. And there's a second one. Nice blue head. Yellow in the tail. Not a bird you get to see up in central Texas. Get them all over South Texas. We come up about this far, a little bit past Corpus Christi. But not much. And they go all the way down south. You get them way down into South America. Just don't go much further north. And who else do we have? Female Cardinal. Female Northern Cardinal. And now the house sparrows are coming back. Two, three, four, ten, twenty, eighty. <laughs> There's Mrs. Cardinal. Coming in and out to get something to drink. House sparrows. 
like a young one, young male, just starting to get his little black bib grown in. People are still seeing the white-tailed kite way out there. That is pretty far away. stash some of my gear and then we'll go walk down towards the pond. Get this microphone out of the way since I'm not using it right now. Get them to get squished. wiring here that I don't need coming out of my pocket. Come on. Yeah, it's too much cables hanging off of me. Let's just kind of shove that into the pocket there. Make there sure everything's still working. Yep. And I'm going to switch back to my wider field camera, so it'll be dark for a second in three, two, one. And we are back. So I'm going to compact my tripod down a little bit. Make sure my other stuff isn't falling off. camera for a little like, rest. Then we will go walk down towards the pond. Hopefully we'll be able to find some little shorebirds and other interesting things. Grab a drink of water first. Now we'll go for a little walk come back up here in a little bit see if there's any better luck with the hawks. But there's not much flying over right now, so we'll go check out some waterfowl. So I can get my gear moving and we'll head on down the hill. And off we go. Thanks for the email, Jesse. Absolutely, yeah. Good I'm luck if you're to gonna go there. look for that Oplomato Falcon and yeah, it, they're Usually there, I saw some recent reports, they should be around, and I might be down there later this afternoon to okay. look for them as well. But all along that area is great for shorebirding, okay. just a stretch of beach that isn't full of people. Thank you. <laughs> great. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Then, uh, found a kestrel about the same thing. Yeah, Come on. Here. Gotta be a new bird. Never seen a bird prey like this. Yeah. It may have been right when they were changing. Nope. I think I did call it that. And off we go. So this is more of Hazel Bay's Moore Park. This is a nice view of Hawkwatch platform. As I said, it is generally closed to large groups of people, but if you get here early enough and get a spot, there's a few areas you can, they'll let you go up and stay a safe distance from the researchers. That was just like the only way they were able to get out here and actually do any of the hawk research this year, is making sure everyone's safe. We got couches, kingbirds flying over, golden fronted woodpeckers. 
And as I said, there is a golf course right here next to us. Sometimes there's, if you get here before the golfers, which I don't see any golfers out there right now, occasionally there are long-billed curlew that you can see out on the golf course. And now I do see golfers there. And walking along here, do keep your ears out, not only for birds, but for the whistling sound of a golf ball flying through the air. I've had them land uh, fairly close to me on this side of the fence. Not every golfer is the most accurate golfer. So don't get hit in the head by a flying golf ball. And more importantly, don't let the golf balls hit your camera or binoculars. Got mockingbirds flying down, white-winged doves. Not sure if it's zoomed in enough, but there's chimney swift flying overhead. There's lots of swallows and swifts out here now. We might find some swallows that I can get on camera, but tracking them in flight is not a skill I have yet for just looking at the back of the camera on the screen. You can kind of do it through the viewfinder, but then you can't see anything. The mockingbird here on the fence. Not seeing really anything looking curlewish out there yet. Hopefully, I'm keeping internet connectivity. Yep, still looks good. Here in some blue-gray net catchers and the chipping of cardinals. Of course, the mockingbirds are still talking. This little area where it, the road bends up here is frequently a good spot for getting close-up views of vermilion flycatchers and mosquitoes. May have to set the camera down and dose up on more bug junk here in a second. Those swallows going over, those didn't look like barn swallows. You can get bank swallows, northern rough wing swallows, cliff and this cave. And I believe purple martins. Yes, I had purple martin yesterday, so they can be around here too. Not seeing. Million yet. I'm hearing ladderback woodpecker a little closer. Might be able to find one of those. The only birds I'm seeing out on the golf course itself is great tailed grackles. Hearing lots of mockingbirds. You see something that looks a little different over there. Let me get some binoculars on it real quick. See if it's worth putting the camera or if it's just another grackle. It's neither. It's a squirrel. Not even an interesting kind of squirrel. It's regular little fox squirrels. Got uh, European starlings flying overhead. Mosquitoes. No vermilion today. Saw him a little further down. He might have moved out into the field. We'll see what he if he wants to cooperate today. Here in more green jays. White winged doves flying over. A 
couch is Kingbird flying by. Right around this corner, we'll get down to the pond area. There's a good looking couch is Kingbird up here. I'm gonna zoom in for you a little bit in case anyone just coming in has not had at least a moderate look at one of these guys. They're a very pretty bird. There he is. You can see the yellow goes all the way up the breast, unlike the western kingbird where the yellow only goes about halfway up the breast. You'll hear them all around here. They go kind of tuk 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 breer breer. There he just flew over by this dove I think. Uh, where'd you go? There he is. Yeah, that's a seems like a decent spot for me to leave you on for a second while I put a little bug spray on here in blue-gray net catcher. Let me get this spray out. Get away from the camera a little bit. I don't want to spray the camera. Mosquitoes are starting to eat me up. Should have put this on earlier, but there weren't really any up by the hawk watch platform. But it's not the case here. Okay. All right, got a few responses. Looks like there's been kinglets and Wilson's warblers in here recently, and common yellow throats between the ponds. So we'll see if we can find any of those. That would all be good. So far, just here in blue gray gnat catchers. Uh, Couch's kingbird just flew out. I know last year there was a tropical kingbird in here as well. They look very similar to Couch's kingbird. They have a little bit longer bill shape, a little more slender body. Uh, they're hard to tell apart visually. Uh, by sound, the tropical kingbird trills. Well, the couch's kingbird goes tuk tuk breer. So if you hear them, it's a little easier to tell them apart. Visually, they're very difficult. And here comes a car. Let me get out of the road. We'll continue on down. Ruffling swallows just flew overhead. Nice if we could find one of those the Wilson's warblers in here, or any kind of warbler. Yeah, right down here is usually a good little migrant spot. And of course, common yellow throat likes being around water. And there's a nice big pond down here. Oh, something just flew across the road. I think it was a butterbutt. I think I saw a flash of yellow on its rump. I see a yellow rump warbler, so as long as we're not getting too chewed up by the mosquitoes in here, we'll stop on the road. See if we can find one of these migrant birds or winter residents like the yellow rumps are. I saw him hop in there. Let me get binoculars on him. It is not a yellow rump warbler. It is an American red start, female. So let me see if I can find it for you guys. It's pretty deep back in there and this thing does not like focusing through vegetation, and I don't see it right now either. But um, what I saw must have been it's get out of the road. Trucks coming through here. But I saw its little yellow outer tail feathers, so it's either a 
female or a first-year male American Red Start. It's doing its nice little tail fan in there when I had the binoculars on it. And I think it's... So watch for movement in there. That's where it was. I'm not seeing it right now. Losing about a pint of blood per minute here from all the wonderful little needle nosed warblers that are buzzing around me. <laughs> I think it might be over here now. There's something hopping right in there. Could be the cardinal that I'm hearing chip. Could be the red start. So it's another perk of birding via live stream for all of you. You don't have to sit here in the mosquitoes. You just get to sit at home and watch the birds. I'm not seeing the red start. I think it moved further back in. I'll keep an ear out for it and an eye out for it if we see it. But for now, I'm going to get out a little into the more open area where I might not be losing quite as much blood and where we can look at sitting ducks. It's a little easier to get in the camera than a little warbler moving back through thick brush. Now we're going to be looking a little into the sun right now. Might have to go around to the other side to get a nice clear view of everything. But we can see what we can see from here. This is usually the place I get the green kingfisher from. We've got a snowy egret. Looks like he just got something to eat. Happy little egret. And I'm going to switch back to my bigger camera because I can offset a little bit more of the glare of the sun with that one. So it's going to be going dark in three, two, one. And we are back. So, snowy egret. Let's have a look at some of these ducks. I see ducks right there. Let's see, what are you guys? bring up the exposure and they are still very backlit. Those look like blue winged teal. You can see a little half moon shape on that one right in front of the face. Right over the beak it's got a little half moon making it a blue winged teal. And let's see what else we've got. Do a quick scan with my binoculars. I can pick stuff out a little easier with them. We've got more blue winged teal. Ah, here's a different. Well, it's a pair, male and female blue winged teal. And over here, that bigger duck is a model duck. They look kind of like mallards. Big chunky duck. Kind of an orangish beak and the mosquitoes are still getting me. I'll have a look at him. Yeah, we're going to have to go around probably to uh, that little platform over there where the sun will be at our backs. 
a little easier than staring into the sun here. Getting everything washed out. All right, we'll do a little more scanning because I know there were widgeon out here earlier. Should be able to at least pick them out. Got more teal. Model duck. I just heard the yellow throat go chup. Not seeing the widgeon right now. They may have flown out. Let's see, there's some more ducks back there. Like more mottled and blue wing teal. It's a blue wing teal right in the middle there. Modeled. Modeled. Lots of modeled ducks. I don't see where those black neck stilt went either. There were black neck stilt out here that I saw fly in earlier. I was hoping we might get a look at them. But this afternoon, oh, there they are. Black neck stilts right there. Little yin yang black and white birds. When they fly, they've got these great big long pink legs that trail out behind them. Funny looking birds. That looks like they're taking their mid-morning nap. Nice look at the black neck stilts there. And I'll look around me, see if there's anything else that I can see that would be good to look at. So far have not seen or heard the green kingfisher. You'll find a little perch and just sit on it for minutes or hours at a time and then fly out and grab a fish whenever he gets hungry. Not hearing anything else except mockingbirds. There you can see the pink legs on that black neck stilt where they get their name and their little round black and white heads and I always like black neck stilts they're very cute little birds I hear a golden fronted woodpecker behind us Oh, and there's some blue winged teal over here that are a little closer. Might get a slightly better look at them if they're not hidden behind the grass. Well, that's a snowy egret. There's the blue winged teal. There, you can even see the blue wing. So male and female blue winged teal. Got that little crescent in front of the face. Or, I don't know, those might both be males. Yeah. Yeah, young males possibly, or just going to wintering plumage. Don't have the full crescent on the front of their face, but it's enough there for a good identification. And you can see that nice blue wing. I do like a sitting duck. And there goes the snowy egret. Let's see if I can get a zoom in on that snowy. Let's see if we can see it's. There is it. No, hop the way. You can see its head there. The snowy egret with his little yellow feet. Good morning. What Good are morning. you seeing that I don't see? 
Right now it's just snowy egret and blue winged teal. <laughs> there was a either young male or female American red start that flew into oh. there earlier. Okay. Get anything interesting over there? No. No. Not yet. Not Thank yet. you. <laughs> Good luck. It's blue winged teal. Walk a little further up, check out the next pond up. I think that's where at least the white ibis were. It might have something more of interest. Do a quick scan up there. I'm not really seeing much actually, but we'll walk over there. I'm gonna switch back to the wider field camera while I'm walking, so dark in three, two, one. I hear killdeer. The water seems a little high right now, actually. It's coming up into the grass. Which might be why we're not seeing as many shorebirds. Could be the water along the shoreline where the mud is. A little too deep for stuff like least sandpipers or dowichers. But it's shallow enough for the stilts, but too deep for the smaller peeps. Nothing really on this pond, but oh, there is something over here in a tree. Get some bins on it, see what it looks like. Aha! I think this is a tricolored heron. We'll move his head over here. Let me switch back to my big camera. Zoom in view of him. And switching in three, two, one. And we're back. Where is the heron? There is the heron. Oh yeah, got a little white down the throat. Big long beak. Nice looking tricolored heron. As you can see they almost always show that white right down the neck, front of the neck. This one it's got a little reddish on the head, which I'm not sure if that makes it a female or Kind of, maybe a young one. Yeah, I think, yeah, if I remember right, the immature tricolors have more reddish on the head. The adults, it's usually blue, kind of grayish blue all down the head and the neck. This one, yeah, it's a kind of little model guy. But still, very good look at the heron. He's being very cooperative. Oh, I think I've got a common yellow throat. I can find the location before he disappears. I think he's right in there. He was up on that little branch. Let's see if he'll pop back out. Uh, common yellow throat is a nice little bird. They really do like hanging around right by water. In the meantime, we might as well look at this couch's kingbird. Up uh, over here. Right there. There he is. 
Nice couches, Kingbird. Kind of greenish on the back. Very yellow all down the belly, breast. And off he goes. Let's see. I still hear the yellow throat out there. Chup, chup, chup. Okay, I might try doing a little pishing, but there's a car coming right now, and I'm blocking the road. Let me back up a little bit and get up the road. Okay. So that's where the yellow throat was. I'm going to do a little bit of pishing. And see if he might be around here. So let me and see if we can get a yellow throat up. He doesn't really want to respond. There's another car coming. Yeah, might as well go look back at the tricolored heron. Where is he? There he is. Turned around. Yeah, there's young tricolored. Oh, and I think I just heard a least sandpiper. Creep, creep. Don't see where he might have come up though. Might just be flying over. Uh, again, we'll try this afternoon for more shorebirds. So that'll probably be three-ish in the afternoon. I'm going to have to stop the stream around lunchtime because I need sustenance as well. So that'll probably go another Another hour or so, I've still got a decent amount of battery. At around 11 or noon, sometime in that range, I'm going to go get lunch and drive down towards Corpus Christi and the shorebirding. But I'm not seeing much else out here. Let me give one more quick scan behind us for the ducks. Got still a bunch of backlit mottled ducks. And blue wing teal. And I do see a small shorebird on the other side. I see a few shorebirds. So let me turn the scope around, or the camera around and see if we might be able to get something out of these little peeps. They're not exactly in line with the sun, but it's not great either. So they've got, we've got black neck still, and we've got a killdeer. So that is technically a shorebird, even though you can find them on top of Walmarts just as much as you can find them on the shore. We'll scan, scan. There's some little peeps. That one on the left, just by size, looks like a least sandpiper. And since I heard one, I'm gonna go ahead and say least. Can't really see the field marks too well on it here. They have yellow legs while the other two, uh, there we go, you can see the brown down the breast that cuts off right on the breast, doesn't have any striping on the flanks. A little short bill, has a slight curve to it. Those are all good signs for least. Western Sandpiper, 
or ow. are you western or semi palm? You're a little bigger and you're very chunky. Don't see any striping along the flanks. But notice how the tail just looks straight and pointed. The primary wing feathers are not sticking out above or beyond the tail. The larger sandpipers, like pectoral sandpiper, white rump sandpiper, and bared sandpiper, their primary wing feathers stick out above and beyond their tail, and when they're feeding you see those sticking out. It, can't easily always go based on size for these birds, especially when you see them by themselves. So look at their tail feathers to tell if they're a larger peep or a small one of the smaller peeps. So this is going to be one of the smaller peeps. It was a little larger than the one we saw over here, so that would mean that again another good sign for least. Least is our smallest sandpiper. This one is just slightly bigger, which would make it either western or semi-palmated sandpiper. Now these two can be very similar, especially when looking into the sun. Western sandpiper is usually more elongated. They have a longer beak that curves a little bit, and there go a couple more little guys. And western usually has a little bit of barring or streaking along the flanks. While semi-palmated, looks more squatty and football shaped which I'd say is what this bird looks like but it's very hard to tell without getting them in a spotting scope seeing as this camera resolution is not all that great but Let's see. If we can get a firm diagnosis or identification on what one of these little peeps is. So we've already had least. We know we have a least in there. Let's see if we can refine that least. Looking into the sun on a heat-hazed camera, not really going to call the peeps one way or another besides that least that we got earlier. But I'd say that these larger peeps are going to be either western or semi-palmated. They're both migrating through here. I think at this time of year, western is a bit more likely here but they should both be coming through. But down, when we get down to the beach, or kind of the more mud flat areas, hopefully we'll be one closer and two not backlit and be able to get into the peep identification a little bit better. Let's see what's behind us, something just blew over. It's more snowy egrets are behind us coming in to fly around the tricolored heron. Ah. Keep hoping that that green kingfisher might fly out somewhere. Let me do a quick scan for him. Seeing him. Let's see if we can at least find a peep to stare at lower. Now this one. That one looks like it's got just plain brown all down the throat, so I'd call that one another least. Ah, ducks. A couple mottled ducks. Waddling along. Ah, there we go. You can see the speculum there. It's 
got that blue, blue speculum. That's that patch on the wing. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Make sure I've still got internet running and I'm not talking to thin air. Yep, still good. Here's a nice look at the duck. Let's move on. Well, so, yeah, so the reason I was pointing out that this speculum, that thing on the shoulder, there you can see it a little bit on there. Let's see how it is blue bordered by black. That is one of the ways you can tell it apart from a mallard. The female mallards look very, very similar but they have little white borders to that blue patch. Model duck does not. It's just black. And let's do one more scan around, see if there's anything unusual. Here's something over here. Right, there it is. I think this is our little funky reddish egret that's been down here for a few years. Can't make out the details on it too well, but yeah, that looks like our funny looking reddish egret. It's not quite reddish more bluish, but it's got an all dark bill. And he's not, it's one of the uh, dark morphs, I believe, of the reddish egrets. They have an all dark bill, unlike the little blue heron, which will have more of a bluish bill with a dark tip. little blue herons I can look similar to that but the beak is wrong so let's zoom in a little bit yeah you can see the big yellow eye all dark beak kind of drab grayish you can see a little hint of reddish on the head but this is this little guy has been here for a few years now and has confused a lot of birders <laughs> And the first time I saw him, he was pretty confusing, too. So that looks like our little re uh, resident funky dark morph reddish egret. Good to see he's still around. And now, standing out in the sun, my computer is starting to overheat. I can feel it if you're watching the stream it might start stuttering a little bit that is because it's overheating and trying to not kill itself even though I've got fans running on it it can only do so much I'm kind of pushing this little device beyond what it's usually capable of doing it's not really made to be a mobile streaming platform but I can't carry my big computer with me but I think we can take a a minute or so more to look at this little funky reddish egret. Appreciate his novelty. Got the snowy egret behind him. There you go, another woodpecker behind me, but I'm not seeing him. Make sure there's nothing else going on here. Everything looks good on my end. I have to double check everything to make sure my computer isn't doing itself. I'm hearing the least sandpiper. Please, please, please. Coming over, flying behind us. There he goes. And not going to stop. I think we stopped on the other side of the road where it was less sun. Let's see what.
Okay, I'm back on my other camera because my big camera has decided it has had enough. It is overheating and it shut itself down. I think it might be running out of battery too. Let's swap in a new battery on it. And then we'll start if I can get it open. There we go. Yeah. The battery itself is quite toasty. So I think that's a sign to walk back up to the Hawkwatch platform, get in the shade a little bit, see if anything else shows up there. Yeah, so we'll head back up towards the Hawkwatch area. Uh, from down here you can actually see the Hawkwatch platform. It's right, right up there. That's Hawkwatch platform. Yeah, there's a few birders up there. They might have taken my spot. So if we can't get back on the platform, we'll just walk a little bit around up there in the shade. Let's see. And we might stop in the shade back up here a little bit to see if we might find that red start again. I'd love to get that red start on stream. Beautiful little bird. But I also get chewed apart by mosquitoes in there. See how long I can stay before I start running low on blood. I right, hear the blue gray netcatcher still up there. <laughs> the ducks are talking. Model duck quacking at us. are having an argument. Yeah. If you do like ducks, once things cool off and we get a little more into the winter time and more of the ducks have returned for their uh, winter stay, I will be going up to Hornsby Bend in Austin and we'll be looking at a lot of waterfowl, probably some shorebirds, some snipe. That's a really nice place to go in the winter time. For one, because it's cold, so the uh, wastewater treatment aroma is not quite as strong. But there's also lots and lots of waterfowl there. There goes a squirrel. Let's see, we'll stop for a second here. Let's see if there might be any chance we see that red start again. Seeing any movement this time. Oh, here is a little bird. A little warbler. What warbler are you? It wasn't the red start. I think it might have been a yellow. There he is. He's coming out. There he is. Wilson's! Wilson's Warbler! Excellent! Ha <laughs> ha! Just like someone in the comments said, Wilson's, I think they had yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, Wilson's Warbler. <laughs> so he might be the same one from yesterday. Cute little small yellow warbler with a little black cap. Got his little yarmulke on. The females look somewhat similar to yellow warblers, but the beak is smaller and in general they're a bit more delicate looking warbler. And the female Wilson still even show a little bit of that hint of dark on the cap. There he is. This is a male. He's got a nice dark cap. If he will stick his head out, who can see it? There he goes. He's probably migrating through. You can hear the couches kingbirds up there. Breer! But this little warbler is more concerned with finding a little bit of lunch than he is with us. 
There he is. I think he's coming out in the open. Is that him? I can see him with my naked eye, but I think he, oh, he's down, maybe down here. Get lost in the camera sometimes and don't have it pointed at the same spot that I'm looking. But yeah, I think he was right around in there. See if he might come back out. There's a car coming. I don't know if they get off the road a little bit. Wilson's is right back in here. Oh, Ooh, is this... who's over here? I've got another bird over here. Uh, yeah, there's the Wilson's again. Uh, very active little guy. Does not like holding still. Moving behind the leaves, hopping through, just foraging everywhere he can to try and find a few more little insects. And my fans just shut off, which means my battery, external battery, is gone. So I am running on final internal battery power. Should be good for another hour or so as long as I don't overheat from not having any fans. So hopefully in the shade my little bit of technology will hold on fine. If not, I will be back later this afternoon, just in case the stream randomly shuts off at some point from overheating components. I will be back and recharged later this afternoon, probably 3 o'clock or so. You can go to my Hooth Avian YouTube page. The stream is already scheduled. You can click a little button that says set a reminder, and it will send you a little alert once I go live again. But otherwise, stick it out with me here for a little while longer and we'll see what else we can see until I run out of battery. The downside with this little thing is I have not figured out how to make it continue streaming when I turn the screen off so it has to run on all the time so it runs out of battery fairly quickly. I'm turn the brightness down at least a little bit. That might help. But it seems like little Wilson has moved back in. Into the brush, at least. As I don't see him, he was working along this edge. Uh, there's probably lots of tasty little insects further back inside. So there's no reason for him to stick around out here all the time. Give it another few seconds, see if he might show up and enjoy the sound of the couch's kingbirds. Chip rear. Get some water.
Okay, doesn't look like Wilson's is going to be coming back out. So we'll head back up towards the Hawkwatch platform. See what can be seen up there. We have another check up here and see if that vermilion flycatcher might have come back around. It is frequently in this area. Super lucky, we might get a big kettle of broadwing hawks coming over, but difficult to get them in good clear view. patch of shade. See if there's any birds out on the golf course. See if we don't get hit by a golf ball. here. Off the road. Check out. Don't see anything on the golf course itself. This is another area that sometimes the vermilion flycatcher will be in up in the trees here. <clears throat> and he might have just moved further down in the field. golfers out now, so not really any chance of curlew here anymore. And again, those might be down along the coast, getting to some of the more marshy areas. <clears throat> but yeah, this afternoon, probably around 3 o'clock, I will be uh, likely at Souter Wildlife Refuge. It's on Oso Bay. Hopefully we'll get a bunch of different gulls and terns, roseate spoonbills, wood storks, uh, brown pelicans and American white pelicans, a uh, number of sh different shorebirds, herons, egrets, and there's some wooded areas there too so we might pick up a few more migrants. It's uh, often a good place for yellow warbler, maybe indigo bunting. So be sure to tune back in. I'll be posting another Facebook notification and I will be streaming again on YouTube after lunch down near the coast. And then after that I might drive down to Mustang Island and show you my semi-secret spot for Aplomado Falcon. Yeah, let's head back up towards the Hawkwatch platform some more. Get 
out of the downrange area from the golfers. Here and lots of great tailed grackles, couches, kingbirds, mockingbirds doing an alarm call, chup chup. Have a turkey vulture flying over. Yeah, very close, very vocal mocking birds. Here in the distant Inca dove. A very cute little dove with a very depressing call. It goes, no hope, no hope. people here. Looks like the whole Hawkwatch crew is finally back out in force. Looks like there's a few other birders as well. So we might go to the outside of the Hawkwatch area. So not to disturb the Hawkwatchers up on the platform. You can hear the Somewhat depressed Inca dove over there now. No hope. Might watch the hummingbird feeders a little bit. See if we get a buff belly or something coming in. And set up over here for a little bit. Like both the lower area of the platform with the blind and the upper area is gotten people already sitting there. And we've got hummingbirds flying by. Either ruby throat or black chin. The buff bellied hummingbirds are bigger and noisier and have much different coloration than either the black chin or the ruby throat. So they usually stand out if they're around. Turkey vultures flying over. Get out of the road. And look up. Test our skill at focusing on flying birds by trying to find a turkey vulture. If the camera will ever decide it actually wants to focus on a bird, there's a turkey vulture. Little teeter totter flight, V shaped wings. Long ish tail compared to a black vulture. Lots of traffic coming through here right now. I'm almost 11. Did you guys spot him much today? Uh, I haven't been up for, to the Hawk Watch itself, but it's, it's very clear, so they're all going to be flying up real high. There have been a few birds moving around, the, the regular local residents. Did you see the uh, pelicans come through? 
Uh, I haven't, but I've just been walking down to the pond down below. The guys up there might have had something. Right between 37 and Leopard Street over there, there's a Bronco Ponds earlier. Oh, excellent. I've never seen an elephant. Oh, really? Earlier this week, we saw a lot of people together as a pond. Oh, we had one white-tailed kite out here, but no Mississippi yet. Yeah, we was that, Mississippi. that was Mississippi, yeah. yeah. Plus, oh, I was thrilled. Oh, yeah, swallowtail. So oh, it's excellent. Birds, excellent. Really yeah. yeah. We saw all those over by the river just going to the store. We saw all those <laughs> over by the house. Yeah, it's a lot of luck. You just look up, they're migrating over. I did too. I said, Daddy, look. Yeah, yeah. Good morning this week. That's the way it's been. Yep. Yeah. Good luck, y'all. Good luck. Thank you. Always like the friendly local birders who give you a little information. Yeah, looks like there might be room up on the platform. I think we can get up there. Great tailed grackles. Birds. Oh, here a white-eyed vireo. Not yet. Um, we have a sign-in sheet. Oh, right you do. There? Okay. We'll be happy to sign in. Thank you. Uh, are you streaming like on a, your Facebook page? Uh, Facebook and YouTube. Cool. And I usually lead a birding trip down here every year for the weekend, but. Obviously right. not doing that this year. I thought you looked familiar. Yep, I've been down here and I've been leading tours at Rio Grande Birding Festival. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I usually come down here at least a couple times a year. Right. I figure if people can't watch in person, I can at least stream online for them. Right. Circling or is you know, yeah, it's kind of circling, you kind of meander. Um, yep. All right, I'll sign in. All right. The highest one is to the left of it. Okay, what's on the ground underneath? Okay, let's see. There's a shiny building um, way out there. Oh, okay. And what are you, you seeing something flying? Or? Yeah, he's got a white tail, but I didn't know if it was the white tailed kite or if it was the white tailed hawk. Okay. I see shiny building. White tailed hawk. White tailed hawk. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got him? Going to the right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know all your landmarks here. There's this three silos out there. It's kind of straight above that. Three silos. Okay, yeah.
distant. Let's see what's over here. More turkey vultures, I see a kestrel. I just flew up kind of uh, way out there. It's on the other side of the river. Uh, usually the kestrels, so I, I see them along the power lines down there, but I haven't seen them there today. Let's see if my camera is cool off enough. Yeah, there we go. Here in a white eyed vireo. Between the power lines and between the two big towers, kind of in the middle. Okay, yeah, I see lines. that guy out there. That one. I think that one's, a, at least what I'm seeing, is a kestrel. Flat, 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 going left. Over the power line. Yeah. Oh, landed. Yeah, let me switch over to my big camera again. <laughs> Alright, let's see where this bird is. Is that the right place? Kind of looks like a Yeah, little guy, little falcon. Don't see much detail on him, but that looks... If it's the same one that I saw flying around, then yeah. that is a kestrel. See anything interesting on your walk? Uh, there of them. I had belted yesterday. And usually you can see them in the corner tree down by the pond. Yeah. And you'll that, hear them clicking, they, that little clicking sound. Yeah, I've, I've had them here before, but I think it was They were here it was hot. I was here all day morning yesterday oh, yeah. on the platform. I heard him yesterday. I, I saw the belted yesterday, but I was looking for the green. I think he moved back up inside the a little more cover. It's good, good to know he's still coming out visible sometimes. Might try it later in the day. Or... I got him yesterday. He was uh, going across the water. Oh, nice! Oh, cool! That's the Harrier. Oh, yeah, I had the Harrier yeah. yesterday down here. Oh, he is up there. oh, that's an excellent shot of the green. Oh. I got a closer one, but. I was going to go down there today this morning, but I ran kind of late this morning, but did you get there early? Yeah. So you jumped on the, on that little palm in the beginning. You oh, jump on the palm, nice. on that little palm tree that's down there, and he'll check you out, and then he'll go around. <laughs> oh, to me yesterday. right. He did the same thing last year. Last year I got, I got, I was like five feet away from him last year. Oh, that's cool. But I didn't get a picture because I was way too close and I had my camera extended. <laughs> There was no way I could adjust it without him moving. So oh, sure. I just enjoyed the yeah the company yeah. <laughs> for a little bit until he noticed that I was there. To come. <laughs> May have to try that tomorrow morning. Pretty but... exciting though. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing when they, they get that close. Uh, they sell those little camel blankets. Oh, that is the one in the camo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. We we reported you to the. Uh... Oh, that's fine. Water Patrol. Not Water Patrol. Right. Water Patrol. <laughs> Water Patrol. <laughs> yeah, that's racist. <laughs> what the hell? Water Patrol. <laughs> she said it, not me. Yeah, I'm more American than anybody else. <laughs> we got, you got that right. <laughs> it's okay, Libby. I'll shove it off as a joke. <laughs> Oh, is going to land? Yeah, I have a falcon out there. Yeah, he landed. He landed? He landed on that power pole about 
on this right side uh, pillar, whatever you call that, of the structure, and down probably, I don't know, 10 feet, kind of where that first V is, the top of that first V. Okay, I think I see him. I don't know the is vocabulary. That... I see a there bird. No, that, what I'm looking at is a mockingbird. Oh. <laughs> And then we've got, I think the okay. kestrel is still further it's up. the smaller electrical one, uh, uh, line structure, the one that has the, like the scaffolding type pillars that hold it up. Okay. But I don't see him. I know he landed, but I don't see him. Oh yeah, the one to the left of where the kestrel was. It would be down, down there somewhere. I don't, don't see anything I falcony. I thought he landed at the top of that right V. It's actually a pretty good camo. Eddie. Oh, pigs. Yeah, it, it works. Oh, oh bastards. They need to be shot. But, I, mean, it, it I think these are the native javelina. I didn't even see it. Yeah, these are the ones that are supposed to be here at least, not the not the feral hogs. That's <laughs> the whole family just came out of the woods. Y'all see this? The javelinas? Every, the, day. every day. Okay. <laughs> The one I saw out there was a kestrel, but... No, but there, there was another one that flew in and landed. Oh. That, I'm not and, uh, entirely he's, sure. If he's still there, which I thought he was, he's hidden behind some of that metal scaffolding work. So I can't... I can't see him. Yeah, we'll wait for him to get up. Yeah, whole family of javelinas. <laughs> I thought he was a little bigger, but maybe not. I don't. I don't have that keen of an eye. I probably should keep my mouth shut. <laughs> well, if you see one and don't tell me, I'm going to be mad. I'm, I've, I've been given the load on on where to go find that later this afternoon. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that'll be my next stop today. I've seen a peregrine. Really? Yeah, every winter. Peregrine. Right on the pole. About 25 feet away from me. Had a pretty good show. Oh, awesome. And then it took off. Right on and we left the pole. And then I just watched them go all the way across the grass. It was beautiful. I had, had the Aplomatos, had a pair of them come in and perch on the power line right over the road once and they just gave me a show and another time it was extremely high winds and I saw one trying to fly against the wind with all his might but he just kept slowly going backwards <laughs> and just gave up and landed on a, <laughs> on a little perch. Wow. That, that was beautiful. That, yeah that was amazing. So you didn't happen to see that reddish agret did you? He was down there yeah. Down there. Where is he? Advanced. Where is he exactly? So I don't waste my time. He's usually on this side over here. Yep. He was. For two days straight in a row, I've seen him on this side of the pond down there. Yeah. Yep. Man, so if I go down the road, the he's on the right side. Yes. Yeah. He was in there with a snowy egret. He was doing this hop too. Oh yeah. Hopping and then, <laughs> and then 
All right. Yeah, he was Beautiful. just sitting there for I, me. There I was, think I need to get on the move. There was a tricolored down there, tricolored heron, and the reddish egret and the snowy egrets. Well, I want to see that. He didn't quite look egret. reddish. He was kind of more grayish egret, but. <laughs> I want to go see the reddish for sure. Definitely a reddish egret. Yeah. But, yeah. And the, the tricolored heron was young as well. He looked more reddish than the reddish egret, but he still had the white line down the, the throat. But both of them should be down there. All right. Well, I'm going to go look. Bunch of ducks. And then little peeps. Head on down south. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he wasn't down there when I was just there, but it'd be great if he came back. <laughs> <laughs> in the woods right before you get to the pond is where I had the red start and the Wilson's warbler. Okay. So just watch out, watch for them if you're interested in seeing. Is there anywhere to park right down there? Uh, there's kind of little dirt pull-offs on the yeah, side of the road, that'll, but that'll work. you can park a little closer if you go down to the curve, but right by the pond there's not as many parking spots. There's no, there's none at the end of it, there's walking through there. I'm not, I'm not walking far from my car. So. Eating like pigs. Oh, here's a bird. Let's have a look at an Inca dove. Yeah. Those are beautiful. I love Inca doves. Are you the one that's on YouTube? Yes. Uh, got invited to that to that thing and I saw that. Oh yeah. I was yeah. like, which one watch is this? Yeah. I saw the hazel wave I'm like, oh, I'm yep. here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I come over here even when they don't have doing the hot spot. Oh yeah. This uh, any time of year this is a great place to be. I've seen a lot of places. Yeah, it's oh, wobbler here. Oh great. Yeah, during migration, this you get excellent stuff. You get the the hooded Orioles. And had him here earlier today. You know, this year, this year is the first year I ever noticed uh, Paraluxios here in Corpus. Really? I don't. I them, uh, and I seen those over at Rose Hill Cemetery. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen any right around here. Them in the, it has a uh, an old cemetery addition to it. Okay. And then you know how uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Rose Hill, but Rose yeah, Hill, I've been over there. Rose Hill has an old section. Yeah. That old section, that's where I saw the first. Oh, All right. The first, and then slowly, right. slowly but surely, they ended up going towards the, the the new section, but way towards the back where the where that is dirt alley is in the back. I think yeah, I I did drive down here, and I did I did hear one there. Or I actually may have gotten a picture of one there. Is that... Did they have a Cassin's Vireo there like a few months back? I'm not too sure. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I know I came right down to this area. I don't remember if it was there. Or, oh! Buff-bellied hummingbirds. If I can get him in the camera. of hummingbirds is difficult but yeah I remember coming down here to chase a, a Cassin's Vireo and I had Pyroluxia show up and I was really surprised I think it might have been at that same cemetery I know it was at a cemetery yeah probably the only cemetery I know that has that many walkers I know last year we counted 23 different species last year wow Pretty big numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's excellent. My friend Kevin had a lot of pictures out there too. He was doing the Wobblers thing. He even ended up making a book too. Oh Laser cool. Focus. Oh nice. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's always funny where the birds just decide to show up. <laughs> you go some areas and there's nothing in other places. You just get inundated by warblers. I'll tell you one thing, watching these birds teaches you more about a cycle of life around here, you know that? Oh, absolutely. I've never noticed all this stuff until when I did, because I've always loved birds and been interested in them. Yeah. But ever since I started two years ago, I've never noticed anything like this. And now I'm like, it opens my eyes to a lot of other stuff. Absolutely. And you just, over time, get to see how it all changes. I, I like the Pyroluxia showing up and... Yeah. Hey. That's a buff that Yep, know. that... That little burst. Yep. Little chatter, chatter. I knew I heard one because yesterday I kept hearing them, but I could never see them. Yeah. And I have two of them at my house right now. Uh, all right. I have two of them and I have like about 15 ruby throws that's outside my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I did... Two years ago, I started a garden. Yeah. And uh, my garden has flourished. And it's like a little ecosystem for oh. All of my plants are all nectar plants. So Excellent. It's, like, it's pretty freaking amazing the way I have it now. I'm like, man, that is so awesome. Now I got other people around the house, uh, around like my, across the street, neighbors and stuff. Yeah. Putting up feeders. Oh, wonderful. I'm like, that is so awesome. Like, yeah. So look at that. They see what I have, and now they want it too in their yard, and they're putting up feeders too. Which is good. Yeah, it's, I've seen that in a lot of places where you just, you start getting, you get one person that sets stuff up and people realize how interesting it is. It's more than just grackles that you can see in your backyard. You know, they see me out there with my camel tent and everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, what is that nut doing? <laughs> Until they realize what I'm doing and they're all like, oh my God, those are so pretty. Yep. Jimmy Swifts. Very, ooh, there goes the dove. Go back to the pigs for now. Yeah, you can still hear the buff belly down there. That was the first time I actually saw him. I hear him over there. Yeah. Yeah, he, I think he sits like right in this little bush here. Yeah. <laughs> comes out and chases the ruby throats away. The one that I have at the house comes up right to me. Oh, he's cool. He's used to see me though. Him and, him and, I think he had an offspring. So he got up there. I see another one. And I can tell the difference between them because the colors on him are a lot more, they look more rough, like juvenile-ish. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I never noticed that until for a while. I thought I kept seeing the same one, but it was the same one. It was two different ones. Bunch of house sparrows moving in there. I love that turkey cat. That's a turkey cat. Yeah. It's really big. Oh, there he oh, goes. My, There's yeah. the puff belly. Is that him right there? Yeah. Just saw the rufus in the tail. And he was chasing a ruby throat away. <laughs> Bossy little guy. Yeah, I've noticed that the ruby throws don't mess with the buff belly too much because they're a lot more bigger. In yeah. Place. Well, it only works up to a point because I was when I was, I was just out in Arizona last yeah, month, and true. you get like the the big rivolis hummingbirds and the blue throats, I and they seen those. they get bossed around by all the little hummingbirds because yeah. the little ones are more maneuverable. The big hummingbirds say. They get chased away, but yeah. yeah, if you haven't been out to Arizona to see those birds, it's yeah, that's something I want to see. Yeah, Portal, Portal, Arizona is worth the drive. Stop over in West Texas, get some of the birds out there. And... Oh, there's a green jay is back. Hello, green jay.
I'd really like this buff belly to come sit out in the open, but that's what I've noticed with them is they like to find a little perch back in the shade and just sit there. Yeah, they do. You get the ruby throats and stuff that'll come out there in the open, but oh, there he is. yeah, yeah. Oh, where'd he go? He's in that perch trap right there. He's going oh. up and down. There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just behind the wall for me. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that is, that is him. I recognize that tail anyway. Yep. I had, I had a couple of roofers at my house, too, but they didn't okay. stay too long. Yeah, I think they're... Most of those are migrating. I mean, I get... Every now and every couple years, I'll get one that spends the winter. I'm, I live up in central Texas. Yeah, I had one that spent the, the last year's winter there at the house. It was there for a good long while. Yeah, I guess it, it's not too cold for them as long as they've got food. They'll they'll stick around. What was that? I saw the Christy Gretto. Oh, there. really? <laughs> Here? Or? It's down that way. Oh, you gotta like, right. you gotta like drive. Get this road. I can show you, I can show you probably better on there. Alright. It's not that far, it's like about a 20 minute drive away from Oh, cool. But, uh, you will see him though. Oh, I yeah. saw him already. Every time I go out there, I see him. He's oh. just real scared that she won't let you get close to him. Oh, sure. But he's all white, and you can see like. Gone. You can see like the black tips on his wing and the red tail. Oh, cool. Pretty freaking amazing, man. That's how I saw was last year. That guy would have bought it for me. Where that spot was at. Oh, nice. That is cool. Yeah, it's been quite a few years since I've seen one. I think the last time I saw one was up near Victoria. Oh, there's Buff Belly. Last year was my first time ever seeing one at all, period. Buff Belly Hummingbird. It's not holding still. Yeah, they do. I love that sound. Every time I hear it outside yep. my house, I'm like, there goes the Chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Nope, oh, you just saw him flash his gorget. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Belly. Oh, nice. Got him for just a second, but got him. <laughs> Buff belly. Oh, he's feeding on that Turk's cap. Of course, going behind the wall for me now.
the camera's getting way too hot. <laughs> yeah. Have you caught any of the big kettles already? Yeah. Not that I've seen, no. I, was, I ha had a white-tailed kite. They were always here. Yeah. The kettle came right, up, right over the pack. Real low. Nice. You should have seen all the problems. were flying. Just, you didn't know where to turn to take a photo. <laughs> It was awesome. It was so awesome. And I just happened to show up because I was like, I was like, I haven't been to a hot watch. I need to go. Yeah. I'm going today. And I told my wife, I said, I'm going today. So you go to work. Bye. I'll see you later. I won't see you tonight. Yeah, the 30th. The 30th. All right. That's when it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's an awesome yeah. shot. Yeah. Oh. oh, this is just one. Oh, so they were low as well. It wasn't just a yeah, high good. cattle. Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, some of them got pretty close. My my lens got out of focus. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Switch cameras. Keep hoping for a front or something to come through. Yeah. Yes. It's a ghostly regret. Yes. Well, you did see it. Yeah. You got it. And then you saw the reddish. I saw the reddish regret. I saw a green heron sitting out there. Oh, cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw him too. The belted kingfisher did a flyover while I was standing there. Excellent. And then. Was it black neck stilts or something oh, yeah. down there? Yeah, okay. there's a couple yeah. black neck stilts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, that's my day here. I got the reddish regret, I couldn't be happier, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> he's hiding. Yeah, he's, he's hiding in the reeds. <laughs> Surprised that you must have heard him, huh? No, because I had the camo all over me, so he came up to see what he was looking at, I guess. He was identifying it or something. That was the closest he got to me. Last year he got a lot more closer to me than what he did this year. So you put on a ghillie suit and just crawl around well, down there? No, no. I have a ghillie suit. I will put that on. I used it out there when whatever I went to the takes, valley. Whatever it takes to get it? When I, when I went to the valley, I used one out there to get close to the, to the white tail kites. And I got some photos of the white tail kites. With a, I guess they call it like a rope or something. It was, it looked like a mouse. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. They had it in the grip and it, was, it just it flew right over me. I was with the camera, I ended up falling backwards like that and everything. <laughs> but it was an experience that I'll never forget though. And uh, and then after that, I saw a rabbit, a jackrabbit, jump over me like about this big. Nice. I was like, what the hell? This is just like crazy. And all that was right next to a red lobster. I'm serious, it was in a lot right next to a red lobster. I'm out there with the kids. I don't care. <laughs> Are you really a birder if you haven't had the cops called on you at least once or oh, chasing after a bird? Yeah, I've already had the cops called on me. You're doing it, sir. All right, well, I'm, I'm wrapping up my uh, my time here at this uh, Hawk Watch, which has been, been, been fantastic here. Love it. You have a special spot. Uh, good luck on the Aplomato if you go down yeah, there for head, that. Yeah, I'm going to head south. And, uh, Watch out for that. Go to the valley for them? Yeah. 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 You go to the valley for them? What's the, I don't know what the valley is. Uh, just look, south of South. Yeah. south. Go well, down to the gold. Down to Mustang Island. Oh, okay. So this yeah. morning it wasn't on the platform, uh, okay. but uh, it was yesterday. Uh, cool. Basically, if you're going, you know, you go through town and, and you're headed up between Corpus and Port Aransas, uh, Mustang Island State Park, you'll see the entrance to that. Okay. And then just keep an eye to your left, and there are hack sites. There are like three hack sites on the Is left. that the place that's you're the, talking yeah, about? Yeah, if you got the, the picture, the I one sent that's you. Tilted, that's the one that they're usually sitting on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you'll see one that's kind of tilted a little bit, and that's the one they've had. Uh, young the last five years with very success. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's self-funded. It's got red knots. Oh, good. Okay. 
really may have to try that. This Wait, where? At uh, Padre Island National Seashore. Okay. So that's instead of going left to the, and they can get some of those off the model sometimes, but um, we'll have to check that campsite first and then go back south. Could be going to the National Seashore and drive the beach. And really, if you drive the beach in Port Aransas, between Port Aransas and Cocos, any of those beaches in there, you may come across them. Okay. They're getting real busy right now. Cool. I chased a red nut up in um, Tarrant County. Didn't get them. Yeah, there's groups of 40, 50 of them. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah they're all, I, I had them. Oh. What was that? Oh, oh. What was it? It was a raptor. Sharpie? Yeah. yeah. I didn't get a look at him. He's pretty small and he's now yeah. climbing the trees. He was flapping a lot. Just from the flapping it looked sharpy, but hard to have to make the choice between getting it on the live stream or... Yeah, they're, they're, the they're, 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 seriously, he's got a picture of what flew over, you guys want to see it to see what it was? Is it sharpie? Oh, you okay. guys know it was a sharp chin talk. Alright, okay. yep. See, we're over here talking about it because we're not sure. I can't tell the difference between the sharpie and the, and the coop. Uh, the, the flat, 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 I usually, flat, just, call, I usually just call both of them a coop. <laughs> Real <laughs> fluttery <laughs> flight like that. that. Either or, it's the same thing. It's kind of a different, like, <laughs> They kind of look shrugged up. Yeah. The yeah. sharp chin looks a little bit more shrugged up. Uh, it's got a little crook in its wing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The green jays have been coming up to the water, but yeah. I you think the javelinas are. Yeah. Which is probably why they're upset. Yeah. Do you have a Yeah. Do you have We just got one little brief look there. She's never seen one. So oh, okay. It's nice for them to come in. Oh, oh yeah. If you, or green jay. Green jay. Oh. Yeah, if you're. The first time I've seen the javelina, we got came here yesterday. Oh, yeah. If you're patient, I'm sure they'll come in, they especially once the well. once the piggies get out. Right. And the white-tipped doves have been coming in every now and then. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, Long-billed thrasher, buff-belly hummingbird. Good evening, everybody. Jesse, yes, fabulous. Nice you. Thank you so much for your help. Good luck. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll run into you later. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I might see steps. you. Yeah. Good luck. Everybody's been so cool. Enjoy yourself. Kind of like hanging out with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I appreciate uh, being able to come up here on your platform. Thanks, thanks a lot. Good luck with really really enjoyed it. Thank you. I do want to see your photo. Uh, 
Somebody, they red tail. Oh, there. Red tail hawk. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll be out there. All right. Yeah, I'll probably be around. And nice to meet you. class of people that want to get up here, so I think I'm running out of battery, going to vacate the Hawkwatch platform so other people can come in. This one here. Sounds good. Good luck today. Nice to meet you. Is it Anna or Anne? So I'm going to be heading off that way. Uh, get some lunch and get down to the shoreline, look for Applemato Falcon and some shorebirds. But I'm going to be signing off here, let other people get access to the platform. Uh, again, Hawkwatch International, look them up online, donate to them if you feel like you want to support them, help them out a little bit here. Uh, I think it's hawkwatch.org is their website. But uh, I will be back streaming tomorrow morning and later this afternoon. So. Uh, subscribe to the Huth Avian YouTube channel and join the Huth Avian Facebook page to get notified when that happens. And until then, I will see you later, birders.